Hello, Assalamu alaikum and very good morning from Lahore, Pakistan. I am Dr. Javed Iqbal Kokar, Professor of Forensic Medicine and Toxicology. As I am discussing thanatology, and today is the last lecture of the series of thanatology. And for the last few lectures, I am discussing the time since death, and today I will be discussing the concurrence method of determination of time since death. So the learning objective will be that in this lecture, I will be discussing the methods which are studied in the concurrence method of determining time since death, like the stomach contents, the contents of the stomach and their state of digestion, the contents in the urinary bladder, the bowel contents, and other circumstantial evidences like flies, lice, and uh, the lights in the room, so these are other circumstantial evidences like the grass, condition of the grass, if the body is lying on the grass, if it has turned pale or not. So these are the circumstantial evidences which help in concrete method of determination time since death. So continuing with the topic of concurrence method, as I told you, this is a circumstantial evidence and some event is going on concurrently. And this may be either process going on within the body or in the surroundings. And we correlate that phenomena in relation to time since death. Like the contents of the stomach, the presence or absence of feces in the intestine the presence and amount of urine in the urinary bladder and other circumstantial evidences like the growth of hair on the face, the presence of lice in the hair, the state of dress, personal effects and other data. That means other circumstantial evidences which may help in determination of time since death. So about the contents of stomach and bowel, as we know that the state of digestion of the contents of the stomach help in determination of the hour of death in relation to last meal. If it is known that when last meal was taken and the state of digestion now at the time of examination can be compared in relation to time calculation. If the time when the last meal was taken is known, the time elapsed since death can be estimated. Sometimes the stomach contents can be matched with a particular meal. And this finding is most important technical finding of a doctor. For example, the autopsy surgeon writes that the stomach is full of contents or stomach is empty. This finding is correlated with the circumstantial evidence or the scene of crime. For example, a case of, in a case of murder, if someone claims that we friends were sitting in a particular hotel and we were having lunch, then that person attacked with pistol and fired on us and my friend died. So that means they were having lunch and food must have been found in their stomach. But if the doctor writes that stomach is empty, that means there is no food in the stomach. It means that the witness is telling a lie. Either he was not present in the scene of crime or he was telling a lie that they were not sitting in a hotel. They were not taking the meal. So this circumstantial evidence also as a technical evidence is very important in relation to crime scene. So the length of time required to empty the stomach after a meal is very variable, we know, and depends upon the type of meal, the condition, condition of the stomach, the pyloric emptying, and the psychological state of the person. Fear and anxiety may cause great delay in the emptying time, and the process of digestion may remain suspended for a long time in shock, and in coma. So the time calculation from stomach contents, ordinary meal, 
it takes four to six hours to leave the stomach. So we can have an idea between the last meal and the death on examination of the stomach contents. And this will again depend upon the nature of the food, the condition of the stomach, healthy or diseased. For example, the milk leaves the stomach rapidly. Large vegetables do not leave before four hours. Chapatis convert into pulp in two hours. Dal of all kinds, that is pulses, they remain recognizable up to two hours. Then rice up to three hours and the meat with vegetable is recognizable up to three hours. All vegetable up to four hours. So if the, in general, if at a topsy one find that stomach is full and food is recognizable, then it would suggest that the victim had died within two hours of taking the last meal. And four hours if the food was indistinguishable. The nature of food is also important. If the bread is found in the stomach, it may indicate that the victim has died after the breakfast. If chapatis, rice and pulses or dals are found, then he may have died after a meal. It must be remembered that the process of digestion may not cease at death. Indeed, the enzymes released due to autolysis may digest even the stomach wall resulting in perforation sometimes. Now the presence of feces in the intestine, the presence and absence of feces in the large intestine may give some indication about the time of the incidence as it is customary to evacuate the bowel in the morning. And if the bowel is full of feces, one may presume that the death would have occurred sometimes at night. And if it is empty, then sometimes after evacuation in the morning. About the contents of the urinary bladder, the amount of urine in the bladder may also give some indication of the time since last maturation. Normally, the kidney secretes about 50 ounces of urine a day. Since it is customary to evacuate the bladder at night before going to sleep, the presence of urine in the bladder may indicate that the death could have occurred sometimes late in the night. So about the other circumstantial evidences, like growth of hair on the face, male generally shave the chin every day, and the beer here grow at about 0.4 micron per day. And from this, a rough estimation may be made of the time since the last shave. Here do not grow after death, but sometimes they appear prominent because of the retraction of the erector pylori muscle and the hair becoming prominent. That is not the indication of hair growth. Now about the flies. We know that the flies get attracted after 36 to 18, 18 to 36 hours after death when the foul smellings are emitting, they lay eggs and the eggs hatch into larva, larva convert into pupa and the adult fly. So as these processes are time barred, so we can study the life cycle of the flies in which state they are. They are in egg form, the larval form, the pupa form, or adult flies are being uh, coming out of the pupa, then we can estimate the time. We know that the eggs hatch into larva or maggots into 24 hours after the being laid, and then they become pupa in next four to five days. And in next four or five days, the pupa change into adult flies. About the presence of lice. Lice is generally found on the long hairs of the head and maybe in short hairs on other parts of the body. And lice generally die within three to six days after death. Now about the state of dress. 
Dress may indicate whether the person was in office dress, night dress, uniform, and so on. So this gives an idea of the time, of the nature of job, and other status of the individual. Now about the personal effects. That means the wristwatches, letters, diaries, food, etc. They all provide a valuable data. Similarly, the socioeconomic background, businessman, office executive, that can be known from the dress. Now about the other circumstantial evidences, if the body was in a room and the lights were on, it indicates that the death might have occurred at night. And similarly, if the body is lying on the green grass and the grass becomes pale due to non-exposure to sunlight in about five days. And so the pale grass under the dead body suggests that the body is lying here for more than five days. So summary of this lecture is that we have discussed the circumstantial evidence, the state of stomach contents, urinary bladder, bowel state, other circumstantial evidences like flies, lice, and the lights in the room. So these are the circumstantial data, the data on the scene of crime. And this, the process which is going on within the body or in the surrounding help us in determination of time since death. Thank you very much. Take care and Allah Hafiz. Bye bye. If you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel. And this is my channel name, Dr. Javed Iqbal Kokhar. Thank you very much.